mixed media messages. When media consumers think of media messages, a lot of times they think of televised public service announcements or some kind of political advertisement. These are pretty obvious examples and they provide a venue for the transfer of a message through a medium or form of media, whether that message is a plea for fire safety or the statement of a political position. That's usually pretty cut and dry. But what about more abstract political advertisements that simply show the logo of a candidate and a few simple words? Media messages can be very overt. They can range from overt statements to vague expressions of cultural values. There are certainly disagreements over the content of media messages. If you think about it, there's a lot of allegations out there that certain news organizations have a political bias. There's accusations of hidden messages or an agenda-driven content. Um, and that's always been an issue in the media. Um, but as media grows, which we certainly have seen in the 21st century grow exponentially, the debate over media messages has only increased. This discussion is an important one. We know for a fact that mass media has been around for a long time and it's been used to persuade. And many modern persuasive techniques stem from this use of media as a tool of propaganda. The role of propaganda and persuasion in the mass media is a good place to start when you start considering various types of media effects. So new media, things like the internet and other digital forms of communication that have not been around that long really, have had a huge effect on our society. This communication information revolution has created a great deal of anguish about digital literacy and other issues that inevitably accompany such a huge social change. Truthfully, all communication revolutions have created upheavals and have changed the standards of literacy and communication. The internet was not the beginning of that, but it certainly has created a lot of upheaval. That does give us a historical perspective and it helps us kind of put a positive interpretation on things that a lot of us see as very ominous. A lot of people are concerned with the internet and that it's that sort of communication, but history tends to show um, that new, that progress with technology and progress with communication is usually a positive thing. Usually just some growing pains kind of need to occur. For example, the internet has been an incredible, incredible source of information. And the internet is available, the information on the internet is available, for the most part, to the general public. Both the wealth of information and the ways people process it are having an enormous effect on our culture. New perceptions of information have emerged as access to it grows. In older times, older media consumption habits required sort of in-depth processing of information through a particular form of media. For example, consumers would read something, watch something, or view a news report in its entirety, typically within the context of a news publication or program. If they wanted something that was fiction, it would be a book or a magazine form. The type of media was more in-depth, but more clean, clear cut. People kind of had a better sense of this is what we get from this type of media. A lot of this has caused some questions about literacy. On one hand, the growth of the internet as the primary information source gives people increased levels of text, thereby, thereby increasing overall literacy of our society. In fact, written text is essential to the internet. If you look at, at the internet, web content is overwhelmingly text-based. You have to know how to read to go on the internet. Successful participation in internet culture, blog, forum, personal website, social media, they all require a degree of textual literacy that you do not need for television, music, or movies. However, critics of internet literacy say that the majority of forum and blog posts are subliterate, and they argue that the internet has replaced the printed newspapers and books of the past that traditionally would raise standards of literacy. One nuanced look at the internet's effect on the way a culture processes and perceives information states that literacy will not simply increase or decrease, but will just change. Maybe the standards of literacy will shift to an emphasis on simplicity and directness, 
for example, rather than on elaborate uses of language. So literacy simply may not get better or worse, but simply will change and evolve as our ways of communicating and our ways of consuming media change is essentially what this is saying here. To add to that, the way the internet has affected, the internet has affected the way that cultures consume news very, very deeply. People expect to receive information quickly. In fact, you can even get updates on your phone. News outlets respond very, very fast to a breaking story. In fact, they fight to see who can break something first. Um, example, on Monday, June 21st, 2010, a spokesperson for Rolling Stone magazine first released quotes from a story featuring General Stanley McChrystal publicly criticizing members of the Obama administration on matters of foreign policy. By that evening, the story had become national news, despite the fact that Rolling Stone didn't even post it to its website until Tuesday morning, sometime after several news outlets had already posted the entire story on their own sites. Later that day, McChrystal issued a public apology and on Wednesday flew to Washington where President Barack Obama fired him. So a story gives us an example, um, again, of some of the, the perils of releasing information way too quickly. So what messages does media send to us? The big concept is that we're constantly being bombarded with media messages on what to buy and what to think and even who to vote for. Ads sell us products, but they also sell us ideas. These ideas inform us how we think about the world and they definitely influence how we make our decisions. And so that we make positive choices and that we're not fooled by propaganda, it's important that we can recognize the persuasive techniques that the media sometimes gives us to persuade us to buy something or to sell us on an idea, etc. cetera. 